lots that could be said. Again, uh, the purpose of overtime is that we would ruminate, reflect, chew on the message, and remember it, and then go and do it, be practical about it, because uh, blessed are those who, who do the Word of God, uh, not just hear it. So, Pastor Brad, you're an amazing father, four sons, you're my hero. That's like... <laughs> Oh, I feel great. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Well, there's so much we could take away from, from this uh, message and reflect on, but... You're also a good father. Oh, thank you. Thank you right. so much. Yes, thank you. <laughs> By God's grace, we do it, right? Uh, and, and the verse, Ephesians 6, 4, really stood out um, where it says, and you fathers do not provoke, or some other transition might say exasperate or irritate your children to wrath or anger, uh, but bring them up. Raise them up in the training and the admonition or the instruction of the Lord. Um, some of the things that I've thought about this is I was also listening just this last week about uh, a Father's Day message that uh, Pastor Timothy Keller was talking on. And it kind of pointed out a few things that stood out to me that we talked about today, which was how do I, how do I not provoke my children? I have an 11, almost an 11-year-old and a 13-year-old. So we get into that teenage years. So I think I'll be, I'll, I'll be start to get, become maybe more irritating. I'm not sure. Is that how it works with teenagers, right? <laughs> Their fathers become more. But I want to avoid that. And so I was thinking about how um, it could either happen by over-disciplining or under-disciplining. Where we either are too hard, too rigid. And I think I might fall into the over-disciplining part where I'm like, maybe I, I can be a little bit too... Um, too harsh of like, hey, this is how it needs to be done. And I ha I've had to learn to uh, pull back a bit and say, okay, I'm going to connect before I instruct and direct and discipline. And then the other way that was that we could, I guess, provoke our children into anger is by under discipline. We're too lenient. We're too much about counseling our kids. You know, even if they're four years old, five years old, we think that's a good idea sometimes. But uh, where we become too lenient and give no consequences. And that can, I think, provoke a kid into anger because they're not in that age where they can just make all the decisions themselves. So what are your thoughts about this verse, Ephesians 6, 4? Yeah, it's such a, it's a, it's a hard-sounding verse, but it's, it's good for us. I think, as you mentioned, there, there's two ditches on either side of the road that we want to avoid. You know, the, being too harsh, you know, too strict, or just, yeah, anything goes, whatever. And those are both bad options. And I'm thankful for God's word. It gives us a better, a better way, a better option. And uh, for better or for worse, we have a, a, a parenting default setting, you know, from our own parents, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's probably your go-to setting. Um, and, and it could be good, and you can learn some things from your parents. And, but beyond that, we have God's word to go to. Yeah. And, you know, I think of the verse, you know, we ha want to have truth, but we also want to have truth in love. And so that's God's way. Mm -hmm. We're full of grace. We're full of mercy, but we're also full of truth. And I find as, uh, you know, the years have gone by, different times in a child's life require different, um, you know, sometimes this is more grace. Sometimes it's more structure, more boundaries. Mm -hmm. So it really depends and even varies from child to child. Yeah. Because you actually need to parent and correct and discipline each child differently. And it may not seem fair. And sometimes the other kids will call you out on it, but you can break one kid with a look, right? And you'll be like, yeah, any people pleasers in here? Yeah. <laughs> so just like one look, I'm like, oh no, my yeah. dad's disappointed in me. And versus like, you know, one look will not do. And so you need to add something else to that. Yes. Because it's about, it's not about punishment. It's not about condemnation. It's about correction and just, okay, they're getting off this way. No, no, we need to bring them back. Mm -hmm. back onto the, onto the road. And so I'm so grateful for God's word, truth in love, grace and mercy. And so he, uh, the Bible is the best roadmap and the best blueprint for our families. I love it. Yeah, and that's exactly what it says, right? Paul talks about that to the church in Ephesus. He's like, train them up in the ways of the Lord. And there, there's this training, there's this bringing up, which is each age will differ. And they'll get to a point where they're adults, they're still your child, but they're not children anymore. And the way you talk to them and you instruct them and counsel them is going to be di very different as they grow up into adulthood. Um, one thing was mentioned also was praying for our children uh, as fathers, as parents. Um, what are some ways that you pray for your children? One, one thing I was thinking about is I, I, from the beginning, 
prayed for my children's salvation, prayed for my children's sanctification, to, to continue to grow in the faith, in purity and holiness, to have a servant heart, especially in God's house, in our community as part of Eden, uh, serving, and also for their spouses, future spouses, to, to, have, to be equally yoked. What are some things, you, how you pray for your children? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, you know, every night, even if it's just a quick prayer, and if I'm there at their bedtime, I just go in and, you know, pray. Just Even if it's a short prayer, just to make that a regular pattern mm-hmm. in their lives and demonstrate what prayer looks like. And uh, don't want any of you to feel like, well, I don't do any of those things. Pastor Farney is so good at praying for the kids. You can start now. Yeah. Let this not be a place of condemnation mm-hmm. for you. It's like, oh, I never even thought about praying for my 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 son's uh, you know wife or mm-hmm. you know, or daughter's husband. I've never I've never even considered that. You can start now. Yeah. The, the good news is you can start now, and yeah, you can pray for that. Pray for their. I've never prayed for their salvation. Well, you can pray for their salvation now, and yeah. and to just start. It's never too late. Don't be condemned. To just start, and mm-hmm. we can always uh, you know move forward in our. Uh, development of our kids and the correction of our kids as That's well. That's good. And make it into a rhythm like you were saying. Absolutely. Make it into a rhythm. That makes it a lot easier because uh, when you start practicing something regularly, daily, it turns into a habit. And All right. Yes. So we, some people don't have kids. Yes. Safari. And we know that there's two things. We need to honor our parents and children, o- children obey your parents. And there's a distinction between you know, a, ch- a child obeying their parents, you know, when you're an adult, you don't have to obey their parents because maybe they don't follow God's ways. Yeah. But we're supposed to honor our parents regardless of what life stage we're in. So mm-hmm. what does that look like? So you may, people here may not have any kids, but we all have parents um, or, you know, m- maybe we don't, but many of us still have parents who are alive right now. How do we practically honor our father? I think the way that Pastor Brian put it was really good to not speak evil of them or speak yeah. badly of them or spread, you know, um, spread things that you know of them in order to put them in a bad light so that you make yourself feel better for possibly where you're at. Because a lot of times we say, okay, I am the way I am because of my dad, because he was this and this and this. And so we, we put all the blame on, on our father and we take no, none of the responsibility as where we're at today. So for myself, I didn't grow up with a dad who was Christian. So um, I became a Christian later on. And then my father, towards the end of his life, he came to Christ. And so I've had to learn how to pray for my dad, how to forgive my dad, um, how to uh, not talk bad about him, but being still being truthful when I'm talking about my story. It's part of my story. So, But I put it in such a way that... Um, that is not this. That is not dishonoring, and uh, I think when it comes to when we become adults, that we have to differentiate between honor and obedience. A lot of times, uh, kids become older, and they're still somewhat being controlled by their parents, and and they say, "Well, I can't disobey my dad because that would be dishonoring." I said, "No, that's there's a difference between yeah, a difference honor you. and obeying because you want to ultimately obey God. So if any instructions given by a father or mother is goes against God's word." We can respectfully and with reverence say no. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, forgiveness, I think you mentioned, was a great mm-hmm. point. It came through the message, as you mentioned as well. Uh, you know, sometimes you do need to forgive your, 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 your earthly dad, and that's exactly. a way of honoring them as well. Mm-hmm. And then even practically, I think, okay, maybe, maybe you do not get along with your dad, but maybe there's something that you can even seek their advice mm-hmm. on. Uh, I don't know, like... Dads love to flex on their knowledge and all the things like, oh, I know how to do that, son. Let me show you. Like, oh, yeah. So maybe your dad is really good at something that you're not good at or and and you can just even invite them, invite him to speak into your life. Maybe like, oh, how do what do I do to take care of my car? Mm -hmm. How how did you know you're good at you're good at managing finances? How how can how can I do that better? Or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm good at fixing stuff. And so that's another way of honoring your dad and just making uh, inviting him to be a part of your life. Uh, may, may not agree with everything, may not follow Jesus, but there, find a way that he can speak into your life. It will be so honoring for him. That's good. That's amazing. And, and uh, again, a way that we said you can honor your dad is to pray for him. And so we want to do that today. We're going to ask all the fathers in here to stand up on your feet. And Pastor Brad is going to pray for you. And right after that, we're fathers Fathers, stand up. Fathers, yes. Fathers, there we go. Fathers, get on your feet. Give them a hand. 
We love to pray for you, bless you, and then we're going to also give you an Eden voucher where you can come to Eden Cafe, bring your child there and spend some time with them. And it's, uh, it's a great voucher to, to again, encourage you to, uh, to be a father who's present with his children. And uh, we're going to give you some instructions right after Pastor Brad prays for you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for every, every father, every dad here represented, not only in this room, but also online at a different campus. God, we recognize that it is such a privilege to be a dad, that you've entrusted uh, these precious sons and daughters into our care. God, I pray that you'd strengthen every dad that you would give him fresh courage, fresh wisdom, yeah. that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would be present in his life, that they'd, uh, they'd lead their children and their family well, mm -hmm. that they'd have the courage to do the right thing, even when the, the wrong thing would be easier, and that their sons and their daughters would take notice of a man of integrity that is leading their family. God, I pray that uh, you would remove any false guilt or condemnation. We thank you that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And if there's been mistakes in the past, God, we put those behind us and we keep our eyes fixed on you. And we invite you to lead and guide every man, every father, so that they can impart the truth of who you are into their lives. Strengthen them in the name of Jesus and bless them. Bless them mightily indeed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.